What up, what up? It's your boy Vigo Sachi. This is the Investor Show, and you're checking in with the investor genius, Prince Dykes. Let's get it. You're now tuned in to the Investor Show, where we teach simple wealth creation for the common investors. With investment advisor, award-winning author, international speaker, and founder of Royal Financial Investment Group, Prince Dykes. Once again, guys, this is the Investor Show. As always, this is your host, Prince Dykes, coming to you guys live all the way from the beautiful city of Honolulu, Hawaii. But anyway, guys, as you guys can already see in the description box, this is going to be a very good podcast as I tell you why I don't purchase IPOs. But I want to send a great thank you to everybody uh, that um, purchased the, uh, my books, Wesley Learns to Invest and Wesley Learns About Credit. And I hope you guys had a nice, and beautiful, and enjoyable July 4th here. If you're here in America, around the world, I don't know what you guys do on July 4th, but here in America, it's our Independence Day. We just celebrated Independence Day. Hey guys, if you are just hearing the podcast, don't forget to follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the other great stuff. But anyway, guys, as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. You're now tuned in to The Investor Show. As you guys can see in the title, um, I don't know what the title is going to be in exact words, but it's going to be something why I don't purchase IPOs. Um and if you don't know what an IPO is, it's an initial public offering. It's the first time something becomes offered to the public. Kind of like what the um it's kind of like what the word breaks down to. IPO, right? Initial public offering. This is the first time something's been offered to the public. It's a way for a company. Why do what's so big about them? It's a way for a company to take money from the public, and it's a way for the public to be able to invest into a company. Um, oftentimes, this is they become very popular because, uh, for example, when Facebook came to the market for the first time, everybody had the ability to be able to invest into one of their favorite brands, their favorite companies. Um, I know it was a recent we had Blue Apron that just did a IPO. I'm trying to think of the most recent big, big IPO. Uh, we have so many of them that I can't think of one in detail. But the reason is. The reason is uh, I make this video is that I see IPOs come across all the time and IPOs become very hot. Why are they so hot? Because um, you got to think about it. What is the whole reason why does a company go to the market? Why does it become an IPO? The whole reason why a company becomes an IPO is the reason why it becomes open to the market is so that it can, it's a new way to make money. When you purchase a stock, you're giving a company your money, right? So it's a way like, hey, this is a newfound way uh, for one day. I want to take my company public, Royal Financial Investment Group, and I will do it one day. And the reason you want to do that and a great way to do that is now the public can invest into your company. Now you can take this one that you do, the public invest into to you. You give them shares in your company. They become part holder in your company. Now you can use that money to make your company bigger and better and do greater things around the globe. Now, what's the good thing about this for the investors? Why do investors become so hyped and why do they buy them? A lot of times, you know, to the open public, many times people are buying IPOs because it's really based off of media, right? Um, for example, if I'm going to take my company public, it would behoove me that I need to get the press and the media behind me to let them know my company is going public. You know, I would do interviews. I'll be featured in major publications and I will be all over the stuff, right? Um, I would get into the news and all the other great stuff to get my name out there to so that people know that this company, what is the Royal Financial Investment Group? What is it all about? Uh, should I buy it? You got to get people excited. You know, it's the reason why you go to the New York Stock Exchange and you ring the bell. It's all publicity. You got to get people excited. It's a way to celebrate. People got to know, hey, guess what? We're here. You can purchase us. Go buy us. It's the same thing. It's a product. People have to buy the product. So when people go and buy, uh, people have to know about the product. And when people know about the product, people get excited. You want to get, you want to get people ranting and raving, and they can't wait till you become public so they can just buy your particular stock at a whatever price. The thing about it is, the market moves off emotions. A lot of gas get brought into the market. 
So let's walk through the process, right? I haven't taken up the company in public myself in detail. Um, I'm not going to walk through every single process, but I know in this process, right, and when you're underwriting, they have a particular price. Let's say if I take my company in public and it's $5 for the underwriters. That's for, like, people who know me, people who get private offerings, people that may be employees or friends or family, whatever the case may be, you sell them to the public don't have a chance to buy it at the, the offering of $5. So. Now, by the time it gets through all the legal fees and all the lawyers and it's ready to go public, you have to go on a press run. You have to go on a media run. It has to be a big thing. You need to go to New York Stock Exchange. You need to ring the bell. You need to have all your friends and family. It's a big feat for a company to be able to do it. It goes into the history. And guess what? You need people to go out there and buy and to invest into this company and all this other great stuff. What good is it if you go to the market and nobody purchases your stock? You make no money coming in from your shareholders, then it's, what's the whole purpose of going through all of this? Because when you, go, when you become public, you have all type of legal fees. You have to, uh, you're open book now, you know, because you're open to the public. You're taking money from the public. Now, the thing is, um, by the time the stock hits the market, by the time uh, an everyday person like you and I can go out here and log on to your brokerage account and purchase a stock, the underwriting it probably was done in five dollars. By the time it gets to the market, it probably would be ten bucks or something like that. And then everybody's going to say, "Wow, this stock went from five bucks to ten bucks." No, 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 no. As it went through all its private offerings, it probably started at five, and it probably went to six to seven to eight. By the time the bell rings and it goes in there to an everyday person can buy it, it probably is getting gassed up to nine dollars. And it's a hot commodity. You've seen the volume run through the roof because all the press and the media, and they're going to say, wow, look at this stock. It jumps up 100% in one day. And everybody's going to gasp and say, oh, man, I could have got that stock for $5. It came in at 5 No, 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 no. Yeah, it was. By the time it hit the market, it was not $5. By the time it hit the market, it probably was at $8.50. You know, and then it probably ran up to nine dollars during the, the trading of the day, and everybody's going to say, "Wow, this stock went from five dollars to nine dollars in one day." No, but if you really look at it and you see when it opened and when the first, if you had to, if you sat there as soon as that bell rung and you logged in and said, "Hey, I want to buy some of this stock," it probably by the time you got to the market, it probably was at like eight bucks and fifty cent. And usually, what happens is the stock will open up at nine bucks. It'll go, uh, everybody will buy it at nine, then it'll run up to 10 bucks. And then when the publications come out, it'll say, oh, this stock went from $5 to $10. When actually, it just went from $9 to $10 from the, when the public got a chance to get it. They're going to go from the time that it had on this underwriting all the way up to what it's ended its first day of trading at. Which leads an illusion to the untrained eye. They think that, man, I could have hopped in on this. Then once it hits this market, once it hits the mark, once it cools off, once the media goes away, once this first earning report go comes out, it usually loses a lot of gas. All the excitement goes away. Then it goes from you're that person that jumped in at ten dollars because you've seen it go from five all the way to ten. You read all the publications that say, "Oh, it went from five dollars to ten dollars." I need to jump in this. This is the next hottest thing. It's called Facebook. I've been following it for years. It's a great company I love, and you jump onto it, then it goes from ten dollars, and once the air get lets out of, let let out the balloon, it sinks back down to eight bucks. And the people who got in originally are still winners. It's the people that jumped into it at nine bucks when it came open to the market. They're all down, you know. You know, now they're kind of concerned. Oh, why did I get this stock? It wasn't worth it, and it's at seven bucks, and then they all sell it all off. And they're still losers for the day. Well, the initial, initial, initial people, the private people who got the who got onto it on the private market, they're still up. Then you know, over time, you know, stocks move, and you know, now it gets its real true value. Its first earning reports come out. Everybody get a chance to see all the real numbers of the company, and they get to see how overvalued or maybe undervalued it is. And the thing about it is, you just waited. You could have probably got it for seven dollars. And I see this happen time and time and time again. When the hot new stock comes out, everybody rushes to it, and it's all the media, and everybody's ringing the bell, and everybody's covering it. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody wants to see. Same thing with Weight Watchers when Oprah purchased this. Uh, so I forget she 
purchase a bit of the company. Everybody jumped onto it, and the regular people, by the time they got into it, they pretty much made nothing. So that's why I don't get into IPOs. It's a, most of them are a bunch of gas. Just when you see something go public, especially in a market like we're in today, a very bullish market, yes, it's going to come in, it's going to have its little run, and then the gas will get let out of the balloon, and that's when you grab yours. Don't try to jump out to the first day soon to bell ring on an IPO. That's why I don't purchase IPOs. I wait till the gas get let out of them because they haven't withstood time. We don't know what their earning reports look like. We don't know what their real numbers look like. You're pretty much behind off a hype. Let all the hype people go in and watch all the underwriters as they shoot the market up. And a lot of manipulation going on there that I just stay away from. And if I was you, I would probably stay away from too. But I'm not advising you on anything. I'm just giving you my opinion. That's what I think. That's my take on it. That's why I stay away from IPOs. But anyway, guys, that's it. That's all I have on the that's it for this week's podcast. If you guys got any questions, you guys want to write me, you guys know how to contact me, right? Hit me up at in the description box. Ask Prince A S K P R I N C E at royalfinancials.com and I will answer your emails live on air. Um, if you haven't, go and check out the YouTube channel, the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, all that great stuff. Follow me on Facebook, all of the good stuff like that. And uh, I want to say thank you guys for the tremendous support. If you guys want to check out the cartoons and the books, Wesley Learns, definitely will appreciate it. And you want to send pictures, send pictures as well, all of the great stuff. But guys, I don't want to waste you guys a lot of time. I love coming in and talking to you guys each and every week. Thank you for making the podcast for what it is. And it's growing and growing across the globe. But until the next video podcast, whatever you see me do, Goofy, peace, be safe. I'm out. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Simple Investor Radio Show with author and investment advisor, Prince Dykes.